Hey guys, let's do the graphics card the shroud mod. This is by request of a fellow subscriber on a particular graphics card, the Sapphire RX 570. Unfortunately, I don't have that card anymore, but we may have an interesting substitute. This is an AMD R9 390. Released in 2015, this competed squarely with Nvidia's GTX 970 and can play at 1080p at high to ultra settings. But the most important thing, the most interesting thing about this is its high TDP of 275 watts. The thing about AIB or add-in board partner models is that they tend to have beefy coolers in them, making them cool and quiet. And well, you don't really need to be modding the fans or the shroud of any sort, but it may be a different story with a chip that runs as hot as this, so let's give it a go. Our card in particular is the XFX Double Dissipation, in a pretty good condition with light dust buildup and no signs of previous disassembly, so it should have its original thermal paste. This makes it a good candidate to test and benchmark it in three configurations, its original condition, cleaned and repasted, and deshrouded. Now, this is going to get a bit technical, these fans go up to 1400 RPM, but the XFX ones can ramp up to 3500. Temperature comparisons become biased when you can brute force your way through, and so we need to set their speeds on a common baseline, which would be noise. So I bought this sound meter, and at a distance of 300 millimeters in front of the card, they're all set at 45 dBA, just a shy above a whisper. We'll both have normalized and non-normalized results. Our test bench consists of an Intel Core i5-2500K overclocked to 4.4 GHz with DDR3-1866 CL10 RAM, Asus Z77 motherboard, Noctua NHD15 air cooler, and Corsair SF600 Platinum power supply. The R9390 will run at stock speeds with power and temperature limits raised up in MSI Afterburner. Since I've only done benchmarking a handful of times, I take the data with a large grain of salt. After the first tests, taking this card apart is pretty straightforward, with four main screws to separate the heatsink, and six smaller ones to separate the shroud. It's not too bad dirt-wise. Let's get this gleaming. Now that is a large die. Our thermal paste here is Noctua's NTH1. This is then tested again. For deshrouding, the heatsink has these tabs that would get in the way of our fans. I suppose it won't hurt to grind these off, no? This is then washed again. Before plopping this heatsink back, we need this graphics card to fan adapter fitted beforehand. Then we can zip tie our fans in place, one set being 120mm Noctua NFP12s, non-PWM though, so they'll run at a constant 1300 RPM. That looks good though. The other set are 140mm Noctua NFA15s, this time PWM, and can be controlled in MSI Afterburner. Looks real good. One thing to note are that custom fan curves are necessary for these. Let's look through the numbers. Fermark is a stress test that represents the worst case scenario for each setup. And looking at our noise normalized temperatures, um, it hit hard, just two minutes in. In fact, they all did, but restoring the card sees it held back up to the three minute mark and the A15s at four minutes, 20 seconds. Thus, the P12s provide the best cooling in this scenario, reaching the limit 6 minutes in. I would have conducted this test for much longer than shown here, but concerns of this card dying were looming over me. With the fans unlocked, we see more manageable temperatures, with the XFX fans comfortably beating both deshrouded configs at 84 and 82 degrees Celsius. But that's half the story, as the noise chart shows how loud they ran. 
ramped up to 3500 RPM, the standard is 15 dBA louder than the P12s at 1300 RPM. At least restoring the card sees us a 4.5 dBA and 2 degrees Celsius reduction compared to the original condition. Next up is Unigen Superposition, a benchmark that's quite GPU intensive. And normalized, the standard peaked at 82 degrees Celsius. Replacing your thermal paste shaves off 7 degrees, and the P12s run 12 degrees cooler. And they still run the coolest against unlocked fans, though it's a 3 degree difference from the restored and 6 from the standard. This time, there's a 6.3 dBA difference between the standard and P12s. Last one is the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which has a built-in benchmark. At the highest preset, normalized results say the same temperature differences actually. It's interesting to see the A15s at least 2 degrees warmer than the P12s, even though they came straight from a CPU cooler. When unlocked, the restored is pretty much within the A15 and P12 temperature figures, though running 1.5 and 4.5 dBA louder. Surely we see a difference in frame rates, right? Well, they're pretty closely knit, and the messy part near the end here is due to our quad-core i5 being drowned in this particular scene, so I wouldn't trust the numbers anyways. Last benefit to talk about when deshrouding is idle noise. PWM fans like these A15s are beautifully silent. I suppose you can turn these off for a semi-passive setup, but I'm not too sure for a 275 watt graphics card. So to conclude the results, yeah, the shrouding works pretty well. We've seen up to 12 degrees Celsius reduction compared to the standard condition when accounting for noise, and when unlocked, also provides up to 6 dBA in noise reduction. However, our data shows that cleaning your card and using good thermal paste will net you the largest gains. And so, deshrouding helps more with idle and load noise reduction. Between 140 and 120 mil fans, it seems that the 120s provide better coverage here, which may explain the consistently lower temperatures, though mostly around 2 degrees C. Looking back, it would have been interesting to include more PWM fans, such as Noctua's NFP12 PWMs, Configurable speed, runs up to 1700 RPM, at a cheap price. Um, not sponsored, promise. And to conclude this whole video, do I recommend the D-Shroud mod? I'd say, yeah. If you want to help bring noise down and like the raw look of fans on heatsink, I'd say go for it. Just replace your thermal paste while you're at it. So, thanks for watching, and let us know what you think especially our test methodology. This is the budding engineer. See you soon.